of seaweed flow gently the sea. Round her head made up her hair, and of green the shade tinted her skin, as the ruby red heart shaped her mouth. Formed these things, and others confirmed her immersion, where Neptune himself nurtured, felt tortured by this wondrous of loveliness, for his was this creature, and so she wore round her neck the amulet clear, for all to see the azure tone of his tear, where there in that locket well stored was his peril, for o'er her chest she held his heart, and she became a rumbling spring. Now soon time evolved, and the mermaid grew restless, so she proposed to her lover, her master, and king, it was time to reattire. So she fastened the flower, of what kind is not truly quite clear, and she wore it toward the side of her head just over the ear, become flexen, amid the tonguing flirtations of sunray so bold, and within the emotion concocting commotion. Her eyes of hazel still held, said the gaze limpid as pools, tender and soft like amidst the fracas, confused, wanting not, wanting beauty displaced, and again confirming her grace. There she stood shoulder bare, and her breasts, small but supple, even at rest, held artfully braced fruit like a plum. So perked was her grace. Now, finally, her bearing was mystic, for she was the deity sucking the estros in lavender mists. And the snow-white flicker, this was to be the celestial domain where she'd float suspending in effervescence blue heaven, murmuring the essence. As her eyes grew large as almonds, Shone a soft brown caress, childlike and tense, and voluptuous her lips, parted a bliss, giving a kiss, without even a brush, as she was consumed in the flame of his lust.